Hello, Rick Off here. Welcome to video number 26 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. This photo shows the Pipe Dream prototype at its stage of development as depicted in video number 25 with the sliding stator carriage, tracking rollers, and polycarbonate test track section attached. And here's a closer view of the stator carriage and tracking mechanisms. While the track test conducted in videos 22 through 25 did prove interesting, they also showed that the stator magnet cannot be moved quickly enough with a track system at the desired timing points to achieve a full and rapid pull shift. Therefore, I decided to discontinue use of the tracking system and devise a better method for achieving the desired movements. I did like the way that the slider rail and carriage had performed, so I wanted to retain these elements, but reasoned that it would be best to move the stator magnet to a separate pivoting mount that could be actuated by the linear inward and outward carriage movements. My early videos demonstrated how the stator magnet could be pivoted using hand motions to achieve rotation and acceleration. So in keeping with that objective, I drew up a new basic plan. You can see that a pivoting stator makes good sense for two reasons. First, the arcing motion of a pivoting stator enables the stator magnet to chase after the tail end of a rotor magnet group for a short distance as it passes by the stator, and this increases the amount of available repulsion and acceleration force that the pole shift can achieve. Secondly, the travel distance of the actuating movement necessary to achieve the full pole shift can be substantially reduced with a pivoting stator. With the stator magnet mounted on the slider carriage, as seen in this photo, it required a linear carriage movement of one and one quarter inches to achieve a full pole shift. With the pivoting stator, however, the carriage can be linked to a control arm on the pivoting stator mechanism. If the control arm is set at one inch distance to the pivot point, for example, while the stator magnet is located two inches from the pivot point, the carriage will only need to move half the previously required distance to fully shift the stator poles. At the position shown in this photo, a rotating perimeter magnet has just interacted in repulsion to a magnet mounted at the outer end of the slider carriage. This has driven the slider carriage inwards toward the axle hub. The pivoting stator, or MOSTAT, being linked to the slider carriage has just completed a full pull shift. The red colored north pole of the stator magnet is now in position to repel the red colored north facing rotor magnet group and to accelerate the rotation. As the north facing rotor magnet group moves farther away from the MOSTAT, the green colored south facing magnet group will move closer to the MOSTAT's north pole and come into attraction with it thus producing further acceleration and rotation. As the south-facing rotor magnet group continues to move beneath the MOSTAT, the rotating perimeter magnet continues its counterclockwise rotation away from the slider carriage. At the same time, a magnet mounted at the axle hub will continue rotating until it aligns with the inward end magnet of the slider carriage. This alignment will occur just as the last south facing magnet of the rotor magnet group has passed by the MOSTAT. The slider carriage will then be rapidly forced outward, completing a second MOSTAT pull change and one full cycle of motion. 
There are two such cycles in a full 360 degree rotation. A sheet metal band will encircle the axle hub magnets to shield the magnets from interacting with the slider carriage magnet prior to alignment. At the moment of alignment, a window opening in the metal band will allow for precise timing of the repulsive magnetic interaction. The two perimeter magnets will also be shielded. Now let's view a short 34 frame animation of this technique. The animation will begin just before the pole shift shown here occurs and will end just after the second pole shift. As you can see, the second pole shift brings the slider carriage back to its starting position and places the south pole of the most stat in repulsion to the tail end of the south facing up rotor magnet group, which has just passed by the most stat. This accelerates rotation and leaves the most stat south pole in position for attraction with the approaching red colored north facing rotor magnet group. Pole shifting of the most stat is always desired to occur as quickly as possible after the last magnet in a rotor magnet group has passed below the most stat's active pole. This is imperative because if the most stat is not moved quickly enough, it will remain in attraction mode to the rotor magnet group and will attempt to reverse the direction of rotation. To prevent this from occurring, the most stat magnet must be moved to at least a mid-movement orientation, in other words, halfway between the two poles where there is neither attraction nor repulsion effect. Even this amount of movement will guarantee continuous rotation, but movement past the midpoint is necessary to achieve repulsion acceleration. I feel confident that the new enhancements, when fully employed, will function as expected to automatically provide the desired stator movements. In my next video, I will show the methods I have used in constructing some of the new mechanisms and will demonstrate how they function. Until then, thanks for watching and may the magnetic force be with you.